What is happening guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Before we get into it, make sure to hit that like button on the video. It does help out the channel a ton. I really appreciate all the support lately on these videos. I will definitely keep them coming as you guys seem to enjoy this type of stuff. So, today I've got myself an all new team full of just some Pokemon that I kind of wanted to try out. A lot of them are going to be some OGs from back in the day that I'm sure a lot of you guys will recognize. My opponent over there is working with a lot of top tier threats, ton of dragons, I'm seeing Garchomp, Salamence, there's Latios. Overall it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle for my squad, but that's fine, it's, it's, I'm cool with that. Uh, I do actually find these matches by using the link code 2022-2021, uh, so I kind of just battle whoever comes up on there a lot of the time. People are using these OU teams, which I'm totally fine with uh, bringing my, you know, UU and below teams. Anyway. They actually end up leading off with these Salamence, which is interesting. Definitely did not expect that. I got young Cray Dildo out here. Shout out to the massive legend. <laughs> so this turn one is a little bit strange for me. I expected them to lead off with the Mamoswine to set up Stealth Rock. Uh, instead, they have the freaking Salamence, who I do not want to start setting up Dragon Dances. Instead, they actually end up going for the Outrage here, as I decide to just go for some damage rather than getting up my rocks. I figure I value that a little bit more, just because if this thing starts to dance, I can... Uh, make it a little easier to take care of later, but as you'll see there, they just end up going for Outrage. Now, taking a look at my squad, you're thinking, who wants to come into an Outrage? Absolutely fucking nobody, and you would be definitely correct there. So I essentially just have to stay in here with Cradilly, uh, go down to an Outrage. I was at least able to get some damage off on this Salamence, so it's not going to completely break my team, but HP management is going to be really difficult, especially in a matchup like this where they have a lot of <laughs> offensive threats. So, this thing gets its Moxie boost, now it's sitting at plus one, and that is not ideal. But I do have the Swellow here. Um, I'm thinking I really can either go into Choice Scarf Typhlosion, um, but I decide to opt to go into the Swellow. The reason for that is because I can go for a Protect turn one, which is going to activate my Toxic Orb, and also burn a turn of this fella's Outrage. So, I go for the Protect here, and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my Guts boost. If you don't know, Swellow does have the ability Guts. Paired with the uh, the move Facade, you're actually able to do pretty great damage with this guy. It also works as a great fast pivot as well with the U-turn. Um, so I've got my Poison. My, uh, my, my Swellow is pretty much in full effect at this point. I'm actually going to end up going for a U-turn here. I expect them to likely end up just switching out. Turns out he's actually faster. Gotta be Choice Scarf. Hits himself with the Confusion and then <laughs> kill it with the U-turn. Um, so that was actually a pretty large bullet. I just dodged there and did not expect this thing to be lead Scarf Salamence there, but uh, it actually was able to work out for me. I'm able to finish it off with a U-turn, and the unfortunate thing about killing something with a U-turn is, of course, now that I need to bring in a Pokemon for them to essentially just decide a matchup on. Um, I opt to go for the Miss Maggie, or actually Mr. Maggie in, the <laughs> in this case, as I want to see what they're going to want to bring in here. So they're going to end up going into the Magna Zone here on the open matchup. Going for the U-turn there and killing that Salamence over prediction kind of ruined, uh, ruined a little bit of momentum on my side because I really don't have anything that can switch into this thing. But what I'm thinking is I can go for a Calm Mind here, take about 40% from a Thunderbolt, potentially set up another one or just kill it with two Shadow Balls. Um, trying to figure out what the, what, the, what the plan is here. Miss Maggie isn't super useful for the rest of this matchup, but... As you'll see there on that Thunderbolt <laughs> damage, that is definitely going to be uh, choice specs there. Especially me sitting at plus one special defense. Uh, I believe it probably would have done less than half had it not been specs. But uh, and I, I basically am just forced to stay in here. I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball. Get as much damage as possible. Uh, make this thing KOable potentially later. Even potentially by the Barrel Aqua Jet. So uh, I do a good chunk there. Mr. Maggie does unfortunately have to go down to that Thunderbolt. As of course nothing can switch into a specs Thunderbolt. Um, but the good news is now I get a free matchup, and I'm going to end up bringing out motherfucking Krakatoa, the legend, the man, the myth, the legend. With He's more of a legend when he has his fire out, because he kind of just looks like a sausage when he don't, but... <laughs> Here I'm actually going to make a double switch. I know he knows the eruption is coming, and his best switch into that is going to be something like Flygon, who can then uh, scarf out speed me. So I end up going for the double switch here. I'm playing a little bit behind, so I do have to kind of start making some risky maneuvers here. He does actually end up going into the Flygon, and that is pretty nice. It was either Flygon or the Latios. Uh, but Flygon stays in here rather than U-turning, which is interesting. Goes for the superpower. Holes is not going down that easy. Mm-mm, not today, <laughs> as uh, I'm able to live that just barely, and then get a nice little Choice Specs Ice Beam off that is definitely gonna take care of Flygon. 
And that is actually pretty great for my momentum in this match. Flygon is a really difficult Pokemon to kind of work around. It's just so fast with that Scarf and it hits really hard. Plus it has the pivot ability with U-Turn and it's, you know, it's overall pretty scary. But right now we've got a pretty even match. I've taken care of two pretty big threats. Uh, Magnezone does come back in. Of course, I have really nothing I can do here. They opt to go for the Volt Switch. Uh, in case I switched out, I guess, but then, I mean, really, I, I do not have anything that can switch into this Magnezone. It is a damn issue at this point, and uh, he, it's great. It's actually great that he ends up killing me with that Volt Switch, because now this allows me uh, to bring a matchup in on whatever they bring to the field. They end up going for the Mamoswine, and this is fine, because I actually have just the Chungus for this guy. <laughs> so, I'm going to bring out the barrel. You're going to see this fella. You're thinking to yourself, damn, what is he feeding this guy? And that's a secret, but... This matchup actually puts me in a pretty decent position to set up here, as they actually end up going for the Substitute, which is not something you see a lot on Mamoswine, so I respect the originality there, as I go for a Curse. Now, if you're familiar with the Barrel and his epic powers, my guy gets, uh, with his simple ability, he's able to double the stat raises, so as you'll see here, I'm able to get sharp attack raises and defense, um, which is amazing. Essentially, it just doubles the effect of Curse, so I'm sitting at plus two attack, plus two defense, and uh, the barrel is about to run through this man. Um, unfortunately, they do still have issues on their team, like the uh, like the Latios mainly. So I'm trying to kind of just see if I can set up the barrel uh, as much to just kind of put a little bit of a dent in their squad. So I go for another curse here as they go for the earthquake. Uh, the first one did less than half, so now I'm sitting at plus four defense and plus four attack. So the barrel is looking pretty fed at this moment in time. Not that not that my dude needs to. He's to eat anymore, but you know, he's he's looking good. Only issue between me and that Mamoswine is this fucking beanbag. I know for that reason they're probably not going to want to switch this thing out, but I've got to try considering uh, if I can lure in that Latios potentially. I, I really do need to try to make uh, some plays and potentially get rid of that Latios to, to force a bit barrel sweep here, but they're just going to stay in. Uh, they go for the Earthquake here. It's not going to start. It's, it's starting to not do much. It's just, it's just tickling my Chungus over here. Um, and also, what I'm thinking about is not revealing that I have the Aqua Jet. So I go for the Waterfall here. It does take care of the Substitute. Keep in mind, he does not know my moveset. Plus, the Barrel is not generally the competitive Pokemon you think of when you're playing, like, <laughs> matches like this. So I could go for the Aqua Jet and kill here, but I really don't know if they're going to end up wanting to switch, if they're just going to basically sack off Mamoswine. My thought process is I'm just going to go for the Crunch. If he ends up switching, I'll catch it, but... Uh, he actually stays in, goes for the Stealth Rock, which is annoying for my Swellow. That thing cannot is kind of limited on switch-ins at this point. Um, so I go for the Crunch. It obviously does not kill, which is not an issue, because I can just now go for an Aqua Jet, which they are likely not going to see coming. So it was worth it for me to kind of get that risk reward there, going for the Crunch, uh, trying to catch a switch, but not too big of a deal. Chungus is at about half health here. Going to go for the Aqua Jet. He don't give a shit how many speed drops he's got because of the curses, because Aqua Jet... Uh, at plus four, plus the stab is gonna be is gonna be pretty nice. And my idea is to try to get as many uh, hits on things before Chungus goes down. So I'm at about half health after the leftovers, which is pretty damn nice. Now they have a free switch, and they're gonna end up going into that Latios. If it wasn't for this teal bastard, I really honestly could have potentially set up the barrel sweep. Um, but there was just no way for me to take care of the, the Latios before getting this getting this set up. So, looking at my team, we are down to three, but it's really not the end of the world. I have two of my fastest Pokemon left, and I just gotta try to, uh, to do as much damage here as possible. So I go for the Aqua Jet uh, with the attack boost. That's actually gonna do a nice little chunk. He ends up killing me off with the Draco Meteor, which is interesting because I kind of expected Thunderbolt, but that's gonna take care of Chungus. He got a little, little mini setup going there. I mean, he kind of... He did his best, and we appreciate that shit. But what this does do is now opens the field for Swellow to kind of do its thing. It actually ends up having the white herb there, uh, so it negates its special attack drops. But with the damage from the Aqua Jet, now Swallow can come in, and actually a facade does knock this thing out if they end up staying. So they're down to three. I've got uh, Typhlosion and Swellow left at this point. I'm thinking they probably aren't going to have anything to switch into here, and Latios is essentially just going to go down. Uh, so Swellow is going to go for the facade, takes care of that fella, and that is amazing. I honestly really love using Guts users, uh, especially Swellow is probably one of the, the better options here, as it's just so damn fast and it hits <laughs> super hard. So, uh, in comes the Magnezone, and also, as you'll notice, that early game work against this fella did actually put it in range for a facade to kill, even though... Uh, it's got a, a pretty good chunk left. Swellow doesn't give a shit. He just goes ahead and uh, just takes care of that UFO, and that is going to go down. So now, we're down to one Pokemon left. 
and uh, Swellow's over here getting hurt by his poison, but no big deal. He's he's used to it. You know, it's just a, a battle pain. It's fine. Um, so their last Pokemon is going to be this Garchomp. And Garchomp is, you know, definitely one of the scarier Pokemon on their team. But I'm thinking as long as I can just get some chip on this thing with Swellow, I can potentially finish it off with the Choice Scarf Typhlosion. I guess depending on the item this thing's working with. So, Swellow outspeeds, does a huge chunk with the facade there. He touches him, and, you know, obviously he kind of... He kind of sandpapery, so that hurts. But uh, it takes me out with a Stone Edge, which is actually a risky maneuver because, you know, Stone Edge misses like 90% of the time. But he's able to hit there, and we do see that it is actually Life Orb. So now it all comes down to Krakatoa, ready to put in the work. Um, I am Choice Scarf, obviously, so I'm able to outspeed. The Young Sausage is ready to do it. And all I have to do at this point is essentially just click Extra Sensory uh, for the guaranteed hit there. That is going to take care of the Garchomp. And that's also going to be the end of the match there. So the first time using this team, it came out on top. Uh, it was definitely not the prettiest win, but it dev it happened, so that's that's fine. I uh, actually had a really fun time in this match. It's always a satisfying feeling seeing everybody using, you know, like the OP dragons. Um, and just kind of getting a, a little bit of a rude awakening from these absolute units. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate the support. Make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you thought. And uh, subscribe if you're new here. I noticed that we've been getting... Uh, some new folks coming into the channel, and I do, uh, I, I appreciate all the growth. Thank you, guys.